Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you through one of my A-level art sketchbooks. A sketchbook is a really good place for researching, exploring, planning and developing ideas, as well as testing, practicing, evaluating and discussing them. So for my art A-level I use an A3 Winsor & Newton sketchbook, it's really good quality, so it's perfect for drawings. It's also spiral bound, which is really good, so if you make any mistakes you can just tear out the pages. So when you open the sketchbook I always stuck the first page to the hardcover, just so that when you open it you always get sort of greeted with this introduction page. So for this project I did circles, so for the background I cut out some tissue paper and sort of did like a wash of white acrylic paint over the top and then in the middle I just wrote the title of the project in biro in like a fancy font. In the top left hand corner I just wrote a few definitions of the word circle and circular and then sort of did like a little brainstorm of different ways you could take circles so I kind of went into circular objects like buttons, springs, counters I went into like CDs, musical instruments, I looked at an artist called Richard Long. I did a few sort of coin rubbings because obviously coins are circular. I took a bit of like magazines, I did a little quick drawing of Cheerios because I love Cheerios and I did sort of cross sections, sweets and food. And then up here I looked at like stone circles, so I did a little definition of what they are and then I had like a few pictures of like the one in Wiltshire and the one in Lake District. I looked at the clocks. Over here, I just, on a bit of card, I hole punched some bits there and then tied some string and then it just allows you to sort of add more into your sketchbook if you miss anything out. On this side I've got like a mathematic point of view of circles and then on this side I have like a physics point of view. So lots of pictures. Um, I also looked at some more artists here and I did a little quick drawing of a butterfly because it's got circles sort of in the patterns of them. Some more pictures. I also looked at circles in nature, sort of in plants, um, ripples in water, like wood, and then I did another little quick painting of an owl because of the circles in his eyes, which are really vibrant and colourful. On the next page, I then wrote a proposal for the project. So this kind of just outlines what you want to do in the project and how you could take it, lots of ideas, and just sort of like developing on the initial brainstorm, but just sort of like a more written out version. Um, for the border, I just kind of, again, used tissue paper, and then just wrote a title here. So on the next page I looked at Richard Long and Andy Goldsworthy's work and sort of did something in the inspiration of theirs. So I took loads of leaves and sort of positioned them into like a similar picture like they've done and just wrote a bit about the artists themselves and then my versions and how this could inspire me for my project. So I also did one with sticks and twigs and stuff like that. On the next page I did lots of artist research. Artists are really important for providing inspirations for your work and that is definitely something you have to do for your A-level. It can be anything from how they use line, shape, subject, colour, tone, texture or space in their work and it's kind of like your personal response to that. So it's a lot of your opinions on that and like how you learn and use their techniques. So I looked at Richard Long works again, Andy Goldsworthy and Martin Hill on this page. So I just kind of wrote the title, so I just used a bit of brown paper here and then wrote a bit about the artists and then how their work sort of inspires me for my project. I had a few of their pieces of work and a little caption of the title of that and the year. And then on the next page I had some more artists, so I've got another four artists here, the similar thing and again on this page. You don't really have to write much about the artists themselves like when they were born and stuff. I think they're more sort of intrigued into how you're taking their work. And then on this page have a load of composition ideas. So obviously outside of the sketchbook work there's a lot of bigger pieces as well and before I wanted to paint a really detailed piece I wanted to plan how I wanted the composition. So I did a few sort of pencil sketch ideas of like really really quick like 10-15 second drawings of how I wanted it and sort of evaluated it like what I do like about that composition, what I don't like, taking inspiration from artists as well and I also did some photos along the side. And this is the final sort of composition I went for. I've also got a page full of observational studies, so as well as there being bigger work, I also did a little bit in my sketchbook as well. So here I did a really detailed biro drawing of a tyre. I just used literally one biro and did loads of textures and made it really detailed. And on this side I did just like a line drawing, which was really quick, like two minutes. This side I did a continuous line drawing of the tyre, really quick. Over here I did a cross hatching close up of one of the tyres. And over here I did use two biros, a blue and black, and did like a double pen drawing. So yeah, even if your sketchbook is A3, you're not limited to A3. Here this is A2 and you can always like have flaps and things coming out. On this side I did more artists, a little title called Further Artists and just literally more pictures of their work, sort of more sort of evaluations of that. And again over here as well, 
Okay, so I looked at Laurie Bristow, Brian Gill, Jane Johnson. I just had loads of copies of their work in there, which are inspirations for my work. So on this page, I took loads of photographs and stuck them in. I always mounted them onto black paper just to keep it a little bit consistent and a little bit more professional. For the title, I just took this picture and mounted it onto white and then black paper. So with the photos, I kind of took the composition ideas from artists and just wrote that all in. Try and like link as much as you can. Yeah, lots more photographs and sort of evaluated them, what I liked, what I didn't like. And same on this page, took loads of pictures of my garden of like wood, moss, um, trees, holes, circles in nature, anything I could really. For the next page I did some development ideas. Part of your RA level is developing those ideas so you can go from observational drawings and then develop them into something a bit different and there always kind of needs to be a reason for that and that's what you need to sort of, that's what your sketchbook is for, you need to like jot down why you did that and where those ideas came from. So I did really like really quick annotations, like arrows, just had a few different ideas, different composition ideas and just linked them to artists again. And I've got the same here. You could be literally as rough or as neat as you like. And I've got a third page of them as well. So obviously I didn't use all of these ideas, but they're just all sort of ideas that like if I had more time, I could have done this. On the next page, I went to a museum. And so for the title, I just wrote a pretty little font, did a little copy of some mosaics that were on the floor, which are like circular. Um, I took a quick, really, really quick line drawing. You don't have to do really detailed work. This is literally like 30 seconds. And here I've got another drawing which is a bit more detailed of like a biro of a buggy because of the wheels. And I just wrote a bit about the gallery itself or the museum and how this relates to my work. For the next page I took inspiration by an artist called Sarah Graham. So I got a few pieces of her work and what I liked about it. I then took my own photographs in the style of hers. So I went to Wilkinson's, got a load of pick and mix purely so I could eat them afterwards and then sort of laid them out, tried different composition ideas and this is the final layout I went with. I sort of then developed these ideas, so I took my painting and edited it with Photoshop and just tried different effects just to see what it would look like. I then here used cling film to add detail and used hot glue gun as well. So and I kind of just evaluated this as I went, like what I did and didn't like. And then this was like the final painting I did of the sweets. On the next page I sort of experimented with media so here I used bubble wrap, I painted on, on the bubble wrap and then underneath the bubble wrap. I used beads, painted the beads, used polystyrene balls and also just wrote like what I did and didn't like about it. And then here I used collage and chalk and charcoal and paint. And then sort of moving on from this project, it's the same composition and I just tried loads of different media. So here I used paint and then stuck sand on it and here I did it slightly differently and just kind of wrote about that. Um, here I mixed the sand in with the paint, here I used a bit of collage as well with it. Then I went on to using salt and over here I used paint, sand and biro which I went on to using my final piece. Because we had to make a final piece I did a few sort of composition ideas. So again I sort of did loads of little annotations. So I kind of looked at the bits I did like and then sort of did loads of iterations and then I basically came up with my final idea which was this one. I then didn't know what colours to use for my final piece so I looked at artist work as well as more sort of observational work and other development work I had already done outside of the sketchbook and sort of wrote about that and how I used it and did loads of different colour sort of experiments with it. And then I did a little close up of what my final piece could look like with the colours I actually chose. So these were literally just like, took me like a couple of minutes, just literal watercolour, just chuck it down just to see what the overall piece would look like. And then over here I did an evaluation work. So I'd done my final piece and I was just evaluating it. So I did, again, I kind of stuck with the same sort of layout as I did for my proposal, I wrote a title and then just wrote what I liked about my project, what I didn't like what I did do, what I could have done if I had more time and just sort of evaluated it in my final piece and then because this was my last sketchbook of my A-level I did a quick ending of what I've learned on my A-level course and I thought that just sort of summed it up really nicely and then on this page this just shows me a few sort of pictures of me actually painting my work and sort of the progression of my final piece and did a really really quick little ending there as well and if I was pleased with my final piece. And that is my sketchbook. I also really highly suggest on like the inside cover of your sketchbook, just writing your name, um, if you have a candidate number and your title of your project. I also really highly suggest 
putting a phone number or perhaps your address or the school's address just so if you do lose your sketchbook hopefully someone nice will return it and it's not the end of the world. So that was one of my art A level sketchbooks. I hope you found this interesting and helpful in some way. Just remember your sketchbook is like a journey of your projects so don't worry if it's messy although mine was quite neat and tidy. So thank you for watching my video. If you found it useful give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Bye!